So I'm Ann Campbell, um, PSEP member. Let's see, how about, um, how about you, Theo? Absolutely. Um, my name is Theo Lada. I'm a PSEP staff member. Uh, thanks for being here and thanks for letting me be here. You want me to call on somebody or are you going to do the calling? You can, sure. Okay. Uh, Amy. Hi, everyone. Amy Anderson here, chair of the Behavioral Health Subcommittee. Okay. I'll pass it off to Barb then. Hi there, my name is Barb Rainish and I am a member of the public. I am a citizen in this, whatever, um, in this capacity. Um, and I'm gonna pass it on to Jared. Hi everybody, Jared Hager with the Department of Justice here in my role as the monitor of the settlement agreement. And I will pass it to Mary Claire Buckley. Oops. Hi, folks. Uh, Mary Claire Buckley, Portland Police Bureau, uh, DOJ Compliance. Okay. How about Kia? Pass it off. I'm sorry. Do it. How about Hi, Kia? Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Kia Myers Dugan, PSEP member. Did everybody go? Uh, Claudia. Am I the last? Oh, Claudia. Hi, welcome everybody. This is Claudia. I'm the project assistant for PSEP, and I just thank you guys for being here this evening. Thank you, everyone. Um, I think we'll start um, in looking at our agenda. I'm glad that Mary Claire is here, of course. We are going to be talking about the directives and at our full board meeting last month, uh, PSEP voted on a process for review of directives. Um, so I think I just wanna start, start out with that. Um, our process is going to be that uh, at the settlement um, monthly meeting, we are gonna be reviewing whatever directives that are relative to the DOJ settlement we're going to be um, reviewing the ones that are up for first or second review uh, at the at our meeting. And if there is information um, that we have determined through our meeting and community input and PSEP input that we want to submit on the comment form for the directive, we are going to then bring that information to the full board meeting um, and vote on it, and then we will submit that information. That's our basic process. Um, does anyone have any questions about that? Okay. Um, I think what I want to draw your attention to then, and I appreciate um, Mary Claire for putting this together is the two attachments. The first one is... And real quick, uh, it looked like Barb had, a, had her hand up. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see that. Yep. Go ahead, Barb. Can you real quickly tell me the steps because what if it's something that's relative to behavioral health? Does that change the process at all? Does that make sense as a question? That's a good question. Um, the idea was that uh, there are over, how many hundred directives are there, Mary Claire? More than 200. There's, so there's more than 200. So the idea, one idea was that we would focus um, our review on um, directives that were relative to the settlement. We don't have to do that if there's a directive that someone thinks is important, for instance, is related to behavioral health uh, 
issues, we can definitely, you know, bring that, review that, and make comment on okay. that. Okay, let me remind also, you that the settlement. All, yeah, all of, ahead, those, all of those uh, directives are DOJ related. So, 850. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, you. I think, Andy, I, you know, Bob, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm, I think you're wondering whether this committee is going to handle it or would it ever go to the mental sub, the behavioral health subcommittee? Is that more what you Yeah, it makes no sense. I'm not 100% sure what I heard Ann say as far as the steps mm -hmm. um, because I'm still trying to print out stuff, but it doesn't sound like it's going to any subcommittees other than the SAP subcommittee. And I'm not saying that that's a bad thing at all but it seems that there's some directives, especially the behavioral health ones, that it doesn't make any sense to me to not have our subcommittee involved. No, Barb, I think she was saying it's all of them are gonna start here. We're welcome to come and participate, provide input, but this is gonna be like the storehouse for that conversation. So yeah. I don't nope. think it's going to be an issue because if we need to get involved with it, we will. Here. I think it's a great idea, actually. <laughs> I think sending it, I think it needs to be sent through the committee. It will committee. after. After it's vetted here, it will go on to the next step, which will be whoever else wants to work on it can provide input. Is that correct, Ann? Is that what you said? Yes, yes. So we're going to review them at our meeting right. and, and everyone will have all that information, the ones that we are reviewing and they can participate, share information, and then they'll have another opportunity at the full PSEP board meeting um, to share information and comments that they want us to um, submit on the PPB directives comment form. Or make a different, yeah, make a change in the language. Correct, correct. Yeah. Comments, yeah. changes. Yeah, because I don't think, I don't imagine the behavioral health directives being separated out by racial equity, by mental health. I think it's, to me, it sounds very generalized topics. I don't know. I could be wrong, but. Well, I, I appreciate that. Um, Mary Claire, you might answer that better. You Go know, the, the directives do have, you know, categories, but you know, the ones that are particular to DOJ would obviously be around mental health, uh, use of force, training, accountability, those kind of things. And so- And those, racial equity, gotta have that. Sure. Um, yeah. <laughs> although there aren't as many directives, you know, particular to that, I mean, in the, Accountability, there might be 24 of them, you know, the 300 series, we call it or something. And um, so they're just, you know, chunks of areas uh, that have a number of directives that DOJ has an interest in. Okay. Based on obviously the topics that are covered in the settlement agreement. You're right, um, Barb, it, it does relate to the settlement agreement. And this is uh, by no means the only place that these directives can be reviewed. They can be reviewed at any subcommittee meeting um, that people want to, to review information. This is simply setting up a process so that we do review the, the uh, directives and kind of get some sort of a process going and piece up. Um, so that's kind of where this exactly. is where this is uh, going and coming from. Jared, do you have a question? Uh, no, I was just gonna make that comment and, and you've already hit on it, Ann, so I don't think I need to. Nothing that I've heard you say is exclusive of the Behavioral Health Subcommittee taking a look at the 850 series or the 800 series that deal with behavioral health. And I would expect that you would alert them if you were looking at those um, policy so yeah i just saw that these are symbiotic ideas and i'm glad you already found the middle ground thanks Anne. and i and i would also add to that um that there's nothing to stop individuals for from uh making their own comments um 
to the Bureau on that um, comment page as well. So you can do it as individuals, as a group, as a body, you know, whatever. I mean, it could be the subcommittee, it could be the full committee, it could be you as your, you know, um, in, the, in your individual life or as an individual member. So we'll take it, anything and everything you give us. Well, thank you for that. I, um, in the sheet that is attached to our agenda, there are 33 DOJ directives. And, and it's my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, Mary Claire, they come up every year. So these 33 will cycle through, is it every year or every two years? So if we don't catch it this time due to the time constraints of 15 days or 30 days, we'll catch it next time. Is that correct? Yes, yes. So the DOJ ones are theoretically or uh, hopefully um, posted at least um, annually. And um, thank like you, I Claudia. Said, yeah. Then um, and your, your comments on ever on any directive are welcome at any time during the year too. We if something if you send a comment because you thought of something. Today for uh, uh, one of these directives that's not coming up for a while, you send it in, we're still gonna save it until that, you know, it, we have a folder for comments on each one of these and we would save it until it actually, till the policy was posted and um, looked at for, you know, review or revision. Thank you. And I know that we talked about at previous meetings about the prospect of having a calendar that would kind of give everyone a heads up of what to expect and what was was uh, what was on the horizon so that people could prepare. Can you say a little bit about that idea, Mary Claire? Um, yeah, well, um, you know, we, <laughs> a number of times we've tried that calendar um, approach, you know, based on when due dates were for reviews and stuff like that. Um, and I will tell you, it has been a constant challenge. I have you know, two um, employees in that department, in that unit. And um, as I said, over 200 or more directives. And, you know, it's just one of those kind of things that uh, it's hard to keep to a schedule when um, issues come up that um, require immediate attention. So, you know, I think I told Ann about the mayor's um, 19 point plan, um, for example, you know, wanted to change, you know, consent searches that we had to give, you know, some kind of piece of paper to anybody who stopped and asked, you know, for consent to search. That was not on our radar um, at the time um, and wasn't, you know, it wasn't even a DOJ um, directive. And yet we have taken months uh, working on that, trying to, you know, between all that it takes and you know, as we go through this process, I think you'll come to appreciate all the effort that, you know, goes in to, to developing directives, to new ones or revising current ones. Um, you know, the team does a lot of research into best practices, looks all around the country for model, you know, um, uh, policies and things like that. You know, you have to get public comment, you know, the people in the Bureau all get to, you know, contribute and ultimately it's, you know, up to, uh, usually the ch uh, chief of police, but at times it's up to the commissioner. Um, I mean, he, you know, determined that we needed to drop things and work on that. Or, you know, the legislature, when they did, uh, changed the law about chokeholds or, you know, um, we had to look at ours, we, you know, we were directed to look at ours and make some changes to that policy that wasn't, you know, up for review. I mean, our force policy wasn't coming up until January, but we had to jump and do that. So stick into a calendar. So what we did instead was provided Anne with uh, a list of uh, directives that we hope to at least begin, you know, working on in the first quarter of 2021. Um, and, um, that's about the biggest commitment we can make at this point because the calendar, you know, it, we just can't, it, we don't control our destiny. The legislature actually is going to start again um, next week, as you all know, and I'm expecting lots of um, proposals for, you know, changes to, you know, to policing in, in the state. And so we may have to switch gears again if they, you know, 
um, make a quick change in the law, then um, your policies have to reflect the, the current state of the law. So we would immediately move to make the change, just like we had to change, you know, to um, deal with the chokehold one, for example. Or um, so that's that's the problem with you know schedules is um, you never can keep them. When you're crisis driven, this is yeah. what you get. Yeah. How, you know, whenever it happens, you got to jump. That's sure. how it works. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and to be honest with you, we have 100 directives that probably haven't been looked at in between five and 10 years. And, you know, fortunately, they're, you know, the ones that are less, you know, of, you know, uh, of, you know, I don't want to, well, sort of, uh, not that they're not important, but they're not as, you know, um, not as relevant in the but, moment. Yeah. Right. So, you know, something like that. You know, I mean, yeah. if it's about, you know, our, um, so some of the things like, I don't know, we have milk expression uh, uh, directive. Give me a break. Um, that shows you how old it is, is that's what it's called, the milk expression. Give me. Um, but, you know, things like that, we just, you know, I mean, clearly that needs to be updated, but, you know, we just don't have time to get to the ones that, you know, aren't as primary, you know, are not of as primary um, uh, interest for either the public or the bureau. So, um, well yeah, thank that's, you. That's the challenge. So thank you very much. And so the second um, document that was attached, the current and potential reviews, that is what you're referring to is is what you're hoping to get to in the first quarter. Is that correct, Mary? Claire? Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, so I want to kind of ask if anyone has any feedback. I I do want to share that I was given some some feedback from community members regarding um, actually the directive process. So we might be, uh, we're looking at the possibility of putting together a recommendation around some of the information that we've received okay. um, relative to the time of review. Right. And you know what, um, and if, if you would indulge me just one second. Um, We've heard it before. We've heard it from the get-go. Dan Handelman constantly brings this up. All I would ask is that maybe we try this process first before, you know, you've, this is the first time that the PCEP has actually set up a process to, you know, to address the policy, you know, directives and to have a formalized way of reviewing them and commenting. And so rather than looking at timelines, why don't we see if the process that my team and you folks have set up will work. You know, uh, you know the idea that somehow without even trying this, we have to make a recommendation to change up the timelines. We still have an obligation, the Bureau does, um, and we certainly want to work with you, but we also have an obligation to, to get these directives done as best and as quickly as we can. And adding time means fewer, you know, uh, directives can be, you know, can be addressed. And as I said to you, we're already, you know, um, behind in, in how many should be reviewed on a regular basis. So I would just urge you to consider that of giving this at least a pilot project before you go making recommendations to change our timelines. We've already had that discussion a number of times. We did change it once. It used to be just a, you know, 30 days and we changed it to make it 15 at the beginning because that's the policies in oh. place. And we give you another 30 at the end um, to comment on what we are proposing. So um, we've already added an, an additional step and additional time. Um, and so uh, just so you know some so, of the background of that. Yeah, I thank you for that. Um, okay, I wanted to see if there's anyone else that would like to make a comment about anything we've talked about so far. Yeah, go ahead, Barb. Since nobody's seeing you, I see you with your hand raised. Thank you. Um, so I'm not sure if the next step you guys are thinking of as a uh, subcommittee is to go through the quarter, the first quarter ones that um, Mary Claire gave out and decide which ones are relevant to the PSEP and then which ones 
want to be gone over. Um, I'm asking if that's the next steps or if it's something else. A second thing I'm asking is, Mary Claire, can you let PSEP know, or somehow there needs to be communication when a directive comes out so that there's not like a 10 day lag before PSEP figures it out. Um, so either somebody in PSEP, somebody of PSEP staff or you or whatever, can we get a pipeline open so that when those things do show up real quickly? Um, and then there's a third thing I'm thinking about, which is tracking these, but I'm just thinking basically like how many of these you get, get done <laughs> in the first quarter, not, not tracking them anything, anything stronger than that. I don't think, does that make sense? Sure. No, and I hear you. I mean, it's not using the document, right? Oh, no, that was for something else. No, I will tell you, we tackle a number of uh, directives. And I think last year for 2000, or maybe 2019, we haven't done 20 yet. Um, you know, we only got 24, 29 directives completely through. So that gives you some idea because, but to your point, um, Barb, there is a mechanism. You can sign up for it. We've signed the PSEP, you know, board up for it. Um, you will get a notice as soon as a, a policy is posted on our website for universal review. It's automatic. Anybody who signs up for it, you will get an email that said, here's a, here's a new directive that's been posted. And as I've told them, that's usually we try to post either on the first of the month or the 15th of the month. And that's the 15 day first for universal review. Then it, you know, comes down, see what comments we get. And then we work on it internally uh, with those comments and with, you know, subject matter experts. Then we draft something based on all that and put it up for a second universal review. And that's when, you know, you'd have 30 days. And as I said, we are going, we plan to, and we will accommodate um, PSEP's involvement in that so that if you need more time than the 15 days at the beginning, we will take your comments after that closes as well. Um, and then if something comes up, you know, uh, unexpectedly and we have to put it up, you would get that same notice. So, you, you know, um, I would urge you if you haven't personally signed up uh, because at least all the PSEP members I know get the, um, get the notice as soon as it goes up. The flash yeah. net alerts. It's like, an, I think it's an email that comes out that says, okay. I'll figure yes. it out. Thanks. And Claudia also forwards that to all PSEP members. Um, so. I'm not a PSEP member. Right. No, yeah. He's not on the mailing list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's, Barb, there's literally a spot on the website for you to sign up for the automatic notifications. Okay. I'm going to talk to Jared <laughs> real quick and then probably do that. Okay. Um, I also, Barb, I just want to make sure that. Um, your questions are answered. The idea of this process that PSEP has kind of has developed is so that we will, like for instance, tonight we are reviewing um, the first, first through the 15th. So they are, they are um, put up for review the first and the 15th of the month. Um, and at our meeting, we are reviewing, having public comment on the um, the directives that are up at this time. And tonight, um, the one that is up is the, that's relative to the DOJ, um, is Public Safety Support Specialist Program. This is actually its second review. Um, this is a uh, program and an issue that Vadim has kind of championed. And so uh, it was my understanding he was gonna talk on that this evening. Um, so he is not here, so, um, but w that is going to be moving forward, that is our process, that they will be brought up, anything that's up for review will be brought up at the settlement um, meeting every single month and then um, it will be shared with the full PSEP and voted on if there are comments or changes or questions or anything relative to the direction, directives rather that are up for review. Um, and I see Marcia has, is it Marcia that asked a question in the chat? No. 
Yeah, sorry, Ian. I was just curious. Um, sometimes, I mean, like for me, it's helpful to just like see the process that you're talking. I, I think I understand what you're saying and using this space to review the directives. But I wonder if it makes sense um, to just like spell it out and write out the process that you're hoping to establish um, for those of us who just are more visual. Does that make sense? I know it's like another thing. Yes. But Thank you. That was uh, presented at our last um, full meeting, full board meeting, um, and Elliot had made some changes to the verbiage that I okay. had requested, and I hadn't got it back from him yet, but I can put up what I had, um, you know, put forth as the process, and I'll put it in the chat now. Thank you, Marcia. Yeah, and I, I wonder, um, and I probably have seen that, and I apologize, because I've just been in back-to-back -back meetings. Um, forever um but i wonder if PSEP staff could maybe do like an infograph like a, just a flow chart of like this is what we do at this meeting for this particular topic i think it might be helpful yeah that's a that sounds cool that's a good idea um we can do that again not offering to do to do it <laughs> no, I think sorry that sounds good that's something staff can do um how do you envision that just uh for each subcommittee, it'd be one chart or just one big chart with all the different subcommittees, including? Um, probably just one big chart. I don't know. We can talk about it. But um, Anne, can you send that document so I can see it? Um, but I always, I like, like a, I'm looking for it right now. Uh, are you talking about the process document? Yeah. The yeah. little blurb? Yes, I'm looking for that right now. Sorry. Okay. No, it's okay. And Marcia? Yeah. Just for your information, there is a directive on our on how we do directives, and it's directive. I believe it. <laughs> 010.00. So we can also get you that too. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I just think to simplify things, sometimes it's it's nice just to see like how everything connects. Um, but I don't know. I mean, don't do that just for me. It's not just for me. I'm, I'm like speaking for others who might benefit if others have comments about that. No, I think that's right. And I think that's something that we could post on the piece of social media and, and Claudia just indicated that we can also post the directives once we get them in the email. Um, yeah. Broadcast those for, for folks uh, like Barb who want the information who aren't signed up for the email, right? Uh, mm -hmm. so we can post that on the social media. We, we want to be of service, but we don't have all the ideas automatically. So this is good information for us. We appreciate it. So Theo, is this subcommittee going to do more than the um, review of the directives? I'm not a piece of member, so that's not for me to decide. Yes, yes, it will be doing more than just the directives tonight. Okay. Okay. Yes, tonight that was what we have on our agenda. Um, Vadim oh, has yeah, some other things watch. that yeah. he wants um, for for our next our upcoming meeting. But every every meeting will have a component of looking at the directives. Okay. So while I'm continuing to look, and I apologize, I should have had that um, ready. Um, I want to move on to the next item. And I want to do a, a little real quick before you do it look like Barb uh, raised her hand. Nope. I've got comments about the, that directive as she's moving on. Okay. That's no problem. And I'm sorry, Barb, I don't see your hand raised. So I'll just keep an eye on everybody in the meeting. Um, so the next, uh, thing on our agenda is a review of the PPB's response to a recommendation. And it's been brought to my attention that this is actually going to be reviewed by the um, Racial Equity Subcommittee. Uh, they are going to actually take a look at that and want to move that to their meeting. Um, if anyone has, since we did have it on our agenda, if anyone does have any comments, um, we can talk about that um, tonight. Can you uh, can you explain what you're talking about? I'm talking about the procedural justice. Um, oh, okay. 
Yeah, Definitely. that and your and Portland Police Bureau's um, response to PSEP's recommendation. Yeah. Yeah, you asked the Bureau, I mean, the PSEP asked for us to develop a policy. This is the draft policy that we've created um, at your request. So that's what we'd be looking for is uh, your comments on the proposed policy. Correct. And um, members of PSEP would prefer that, that that is kind of looked at by the racial equity subcommittee. So they're going to take that piece on. Um, they are the ones that authored that recommendation and um, they want to have the time and space to review that more. Um, and can I can I interrupt really quick? Um, I'm glad that this is brought back up. Was that a conversation? I mean, I'm happy to uh, to go over this, um, but I didn't have it planned for the upcoming racial equity subcommittee. So can I get clarification? Like, was this a conversation with Lakiana or others? Yeah, so it was a conversation with Lakiana, and he said that he wanted it to go through um, your committee and he was going to do it at a later date because okay. I know that your next meeting is is already, there's an agenda and everything. So um, yeah, it, I would imagine it would be next month, but he wasn't clear on, on specifically when that would be. Yeah, okay. No, I just wanted to, to clarify because I we won't be able to have time probably. We could mention that we want to have this conversation maybe in February, but we won't have time, unfortunately, with how we have it set up this month. Um, so I'll connect with him. Thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, uh, that's okay. Is there anyone that would like to comment on it tonight that has reviewed it? Barb, did you have a comment? Was this the well? Same? I've looked at it, but it came from nothing, right? It or did it come from a suggestion? from PSEP that was put in writing, and then this is how they're changing it, coming back. Because I only, I'm kind of remembering this, that I don't have a print, I don't have a color printer. So if there's, if things are being separated by color, I wouldn't necessarily see it. Um, it's separated by document, and the PPB response is in response to a PSEP uh, recommendation. That was another piece that was added to the agenda. There was a so, couple yeah, of attachments. It's a, it's a new uh, proposed directive. As you can see from the XXX, there's never been a directive solely addressing procedural justice. Procedural justice is mentioned in other directives, but this would be a, a directive on, on its own about oh so it give it its own home okay yes yep okay brand new you brand guys new. asked us wow. to develop one this is our stab at it and cool it's, it's not a revision of a previous one or one that we've had before is all i'm and marcia posted or uh, pasted the uh the original recommendation in the chat so you can click on that and see it and it essentially just ask um that officers um uh, follow the, the the values of procedural justice by providing their it has the steps in there providing the person last name their DPSST number the reason so that there's no guessing um, why you were stopped um, if the person is detained or free to go uh, if there are reasonable accommodations that need to be made like language hearing other things um, Losing my eyesight, can't see anything. In case the vehicle stopped, ask the driver to keep their hands visible for safety of everyone, um, and in, ensure uh, officer safety as well. So, um, I had to to remember all of this because this was done a long time ago. Um, so once, and we probably just talked about this, but again, my brain is fried today. I apologize, but once we have the re the review. What, uh, sorry, Mary Claire, can you tell me what, what's the next step? So what's, we, we've already got public opinion or review? No, no, we, we haven't done anything. We're waiting, to, you know, we sent it waiting to PSEP. 
we sent it to PSEP for their comments first. Okay. Um, so it has not been, you know, posted for universal review yet or anything like that. So um, that's the next step, though, universal review. Sure. Once PSEP gives yeah. the feedback. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Can I ask a question? Yes. Mary Claire, I just uh, was curious if um, Dennis reviewed that or, or where, you know, if you looked at another city um, or if you just pulled it together and created uh, No, my, my team reviews the best practices, you know, throughout and obviously would have looked at other cities that have procedural justice um, uh, directives. Uh, they always do a search to, you know, see what other um, I wasn't sure if anyone else had one. Jurisdictions, yeah, and that's the the trick. I, you know, um, I will tell you. I'd hoped Ashley, you know, in the future when we're talking about policies, Ashley is going to join, you know, you at this subcommittee meeting. But uh, unfortunately for her, last night a uh, five foot in diameter tree came down on her house, so um, she's uh, not available today. Obviously, trying to deal with that. Um, so I couldn't tell you off the top of my head what, you know, what particular jurisdictions they looked. I know there aren't many that do have it. Uh, I remember her saying that, but um, so they, you know, would have crafted this from, you know, various sources and um, that they utilize. But not Dennis. Do they ever list the sources that they reference their information from? Because it'd be nice to know, because, you know, I've learned along the way that someone might read something and interpret it one way and someone else read the same blasted thing and interpret it another way. So I really think it's important if you're going to borrow, copy, paste from other sources that the original source be listed somewhere in the draft so that like a research paper it can be identified as to the truth versus interpretation or opinion mm -hmm. i've seen it way too much so is that possible to get the sightings of where well, this information was taken well, from well i mean i you know we could talk i could talk to rachel i to Ashley and Laurel about that. It, you know, it, many of our policies are, you know, conglomerations of lots of different ones. I mean, we could, I assume, you know, if somebody asks, we could tell you that we looked at, you know, we usually look at um, jurisdictions similar to us, Seattle, uh, Oakland, um, whatever. So they could tell you which ones, but we don't necessarily, you know, cut and paste. We just get ideas for, you know, what belongs in there or whatever. But Oftentimes the language is ours because we want to have it meet, you know, the needs of the, you know, bureau and community here in Portland. Yeah, so but I think just... transparency in my world means that we get to see the original, and then well, you, we you can look it up. I mean, on, yeah, well, but yeah. without knowing this, the actual document. Yeah. Um, you know. I, we can, I hear what you're saying, we can talk and about I respect that. it, but the future requires transparency, which usually would include source. Like, where well, did you get- The future doesn't. We, we're transparent now. Yeah. I mean, we can certainly tell you what jurisdictions, but, you know, I don't want to tie my people to, you know, giving you copies of every, you know, source that they ever looked at in this, you know, that's, a, you know, would be, a, a, you know, I'd have to see what kind of a burden that is on them because they do a lot of research into this. Um, so, I mean, we could let you know what, as I said, what cities and stuff, but um, I might leave it to you to go read what we looked at. Can I, um, yeah, and can I, in efforts of time, this is really great discussion. I am not able to find my little piece on the procedure. I'm asking others if, uh, if they have it. I, it will be at our next meeting and I greatly apologize for that not having it. It's a short, short little piece. Um, so let me just say it one more time. So on the 1st of the 15th, the Portland Police Bureau will be uh, notifying people through their process. And Claudia does, if, if members of PSEP are not signed up on the directive site to be receiving that information, Claudia will forward that to all PSEP members. Um, and hopefully we can help uh, Barb get connected with that. And at 
our meeting every month, there will be time at the settlement meeting to go over the um, directives relative to the DOJ settlement. We will be reviewing them at every meeting. There will be a part, there will be a time set aside to do that. And if there's public comment, feedback, or anything, we will then be noting that and bringing those comments on that directive to the full PSEP meeting, voting on it in agreement from PSEP, uh, explaining it and voting on it, and then we will be putting it through the process on the PPB form. So that is the process um, at our next meeting. I'll have it for everyone and I apologize, but that is the process. We'll be doing that. Um, so that there's that piece. Um, I know in the efforts of time, we only have 15 minutes left. I did note on the agenda the one um, directive that is up for universal first, I believe it's the second universal rather, it's relative to the, um, to the uh, PS, let's see, which one is that, the private, I just had it up. I'm sorry, I'm a bit scattered today myself. I apologize for that. It is the, um, here it is, public support specialist. Thank you, Claudia. Um, I personally don't have any feedback on that. I know Vadim has been kind of um, talking about this a fair amount um, and he's not here this evening, so I don't have any feedback uh, or comments on it. If there's any public comment, I guess I'm the public comment. <clears throat> Sorry, you guys. Um, we haven't had a chance to look through this one yet. Um, I'm not sure why, but it's pretty important to me that they consider using the PS3s to do stupid shit like traffic control for fire. Like I, there's no good reason why they need actual police officers in the police cars there to hold the traffic back and close the roads for fire. It just makes, it's a really bad use of resources, in my opinion, my humble opinion. Well, thank you. I know that um, that's been talked about um, and in relation to the core uh, policing um, core services that is now being reviewed and is a project of the mayor's office. And I know that um, Vadim has some, some interest and um, wants to see if there's any way that, that something like what you are saying, uh, Barb, that we can possibly um, potentially in the future uh, have some people in the PS um, positions doing things um, the PS3 to relieve uh, police from doing those things, just as you're saying. Um, but I have not uh, kept abreast of that specific issue. He, he, he is uh, working on that. All right, thanks. Hi, uh, Barbara Porton, Cop Watch. I also just want to say that um, Cop Watch want, would like to see um, the PS3 used to reduce the need for police officers like in the situation that Barb mentioned about the traffic control for firefighters, but not to create additional work for the um, uh, police department. Like, in other words, not expand the police department. We are concerned because of it's being you know, used as a apprenticeship and all that, that um, they would just increase the size of the police department and we'd like to see shifting to uh, Portland street response for certain things and um, and peer counseling and whatnot and whatever can be done by non-police thank you do you have some are you providing comments on this directive through their process then specific um now maybe dan is i'll check on that thank you yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Anyone else?
Okay. I do not have anything else on our agenda um, for this evening. So. Okay. Uh, Andy, mind if I make an uh, announcement? Yes. Yes. Um, I just wanted to let everyone know that the uh, court uh, issued a scheduling order yesterday uh, about the February 25th uh, upcoming court hearing. And uh, the court indicated that. Um, you know, Judge Simon's thinking of delaying the hearing um, until the summer or fall so that people can be vaccinated because he wants to have an in-person hearing so that the community can um, uh, speak. Uh, and he invited anyone, uh, whether it's the PSAP or any individual, any group, to submit their comments, uh, their ideas, or what they prefer in terms of a hearing uh, anytime before January 26th. And so if um, the piece that wants to do that, if any individual wants to do that, um, the court has invited it. Thank you, Jared. Um, I, I know I read about that. I was just wondering um, why he wanted people in person. Is there yeah. some specific reason? I, I can that? speculate that he likes to hear what the community thinks in terms of the, how the, settlement agreement is being implemented or their views on the police bureau. It's an opportunity to be heard um, but they and to see given the public can, interest. Well, but they, they can also do that by uh, Zoom too. There's nothing that precludes com public comment on Zoom like we're doing right now. Well, there is. People can't have access. Zoom is not accessible to the world and he well, knows it. So you're missing a whole lot of community voice because they cannot log on. That's why. This is very exclusive to people who own very high tech computers. We got to remember that the majority of the population impacted don't have the resources that we have. We're privileged. I just want everyone to remember that. We're privileged. And as, as much resources as the United States of America has, I honestly don't know that the court is equipped to hold something by Zoom. I haven't right. had a Zoom hearing yet in the district court, and I have plenty of cases where I could have had one. They've done some telephonic conferences. Yeah. Um, that would obviously have some challenges, I think, for community participation. Um, anyway, we can only speculate. You can read the order. I'm happy to share it. I think I've shared it with Theo. So if uh, maybe it can be posted on the website and uh, the link circulated to the PSEP mailing list. Uh, yeah, maybe yeah, yeah. We'll send it out. Yeah, and Thank Zoom is not secure. It's not a secure platform for most high level uh, security, just so everyone knows. Thank you. And uh, Jared, I had one other question and, and it might be in some documents. Does this mean that the settlement since the city is not found in compliance or out of compliance, then the the case just continues until that date. Is that is that correct? Um, well, I think the uh, the Department of Justice is working on its uh, compliance report presently. Currently, I'm taking a break for the meeting, uh, and we're we still plan to file that report um, a month before the scheduled hearing. The hearing scheduled for the February 25th. So we're planning to prepare as if the hearing's going to happen on February 25th. Now the court has indicated it might move the hearing. It might not move the hearing. Uh, it'll take public comment until January 26th, and then the court will decide after that. Um, you know, whether the case goes on or, or not, I, I don't think is um, at issue in the scheduling decision, but you know, it's uh, the case will go on until the parties make a motion to, to dismiss the case and that motion is granted and the parties have not made a motion to dismiss the case. And so, you know, you can read what you want into that. Okay, thank you. Looks like Brian Beckcon, you have your hand up. Um, is it all right if I ask a quick question? Of course. Sure. Um, Mary Claire, um, the other day at the youth subcommittee meeting, you said that you might be able um, to help me find an update on the identification recommendation that PSAP passed. Um, I think it was in October. And I was just following up about that, whether you had heard anything or who best I should contact to get an update. 
Yes, and I'm glad you brought that up because I did have, um, I did check that out. Um, the question was, you know, it was brought, there was some question, I think it arose over, uh, I read the recommendation again, and it talked about being able to identify people. Um, we do have a directive that talks about uh, everybody has to, you know, have either a, a name tag or a, a number um, identifiable, but the you know, issue was the size. And so rather than, no, there wasn't a need for um, revising the directive per se, it was the practice. And so um, I will show you what they did in shortly after, I believe this took effect in November, your recommendation was in end of September or something. What they ended up doing was changing the uh, size of the thing. And I don't know if you can see that, Paul, but um, the, they ordered numbers. Every officer is now assigned a number um, and it is on their um, uh, a three digit code, which would be assigned to each sworn member. And then um, the number is put uh, on both the front and the back of the helmet and the um, size is four inches by two. So it's, it's you know, much bigger, as you can see from the picture of the helmet, um, and readily, you know, more readily visible. So we did, you know, uh, address that, you know, actually by changing up our, um, you know, practice rather than policy, because it still meets the policy of having a number. It's just now bigger and more visible for it front and back for anybody who wants, you know, who comes into contact or in particular at the, uh, you know, at these, you know, crowd control events where it's harder to, um, you know, to get up close personal to, you know, to see, you know, what an officer's badge number is. So that's where we are with that. Um, and each number is, you know, assigned uh, to an officer and they can't exchange it or um, <coughs> change the number or whatever. And, and the Bureau keeps track of who's assigned the number so that if anybody you know, files a question, complaint, concern, or even a commendation about a number would be able to track it by the number that's identified. Does okay, thank you. you. Um, yes, I just have one more follow-up question on that. Is My understanding is that that new policy about the helmets um, will really just apply for officers when they're doing crowd control and are wearing the helmets. Um, is the Bureau still considering um, increasing identification for just you know, your officer that's doing a traffic stop or what have you? I, um, you know, I think every uniform officer has, um, has the, well, this, yeah, you're right, it's on their helmet. Um, so if they're not wearing the helmet, they would be, I, you know, I will have to see what happens if, if it's also on their um, uniform as well. And I'll get back on that one, Brent. You're not going to take them off the uniforms because you have them on the helmets, right? No, no. There's so, always yeah, they're number. on most yeah. of the, the last yeah. name is on most of the. Yes. It's just, he was asking, are these numbers also going to be on their uniform as well as the helmet? And I, I, um, I'm not sure about that. Okay. Thank you. That would um, be a great process to make it unified. Yeah. Go ahead, Brian. Um, Mary Claire, is there somebody at the Bureau or the Mayor's office that I can send an email to? Um, because my understanding was that there's typically when there's a recommendation that eventually there'll be a formal response. Yeah, and you know what? Uh, I talked to Theo about this the other day. You know, we thought we had, um, were up to date on this, and this one just got uh, overlooked in, term of, in terms of sending the formal response. So. We are preparing, you know, a response to this, which will just say exactly what I told you is that, you know, they accepted it for purposes of, you know, crowd control and are making, you know, have, you know, bought, purchased, and and put up in and put in place these larger um, uh, numbers on the helmets, and um, which I think was in response because I think the initial concern was in response to crowd control issues. Um, it hasn't been raised as much on a one-to-one -one basis because clearly the names on and the you know badge numbers uh, more readily you know available when you 
when you're in a position of you know face to face with an officer. But I think this was raised as part of the crowd control, so that's what we um, addressed at the time. Um, and can I? I have an interesting thought after okay. Anne. Okay. Um, and once you do uh, send the the PPB response to PSAP, we will have that information, correct, Mary Claire? Isn't that the process? That you'll have w w what we've done in response yes. to your recommendation. Yes. That's what, yeah, that's what the response is. Um, and you, but it will be in writing and you'll be sending it to us, is yeah. that correct? Yeah. Okay. And so Brian, we could, um, Theo could probably share that with you when we get it, right, Theo? Of course, uh, Brian, I, uh, I wonder because I remember you're the you're the one who brought this originally to the to the PSEP. Um, was was it around the helmets or was it around identification in general? Uh, I mean, if maybe there could be a continued conversation because uh, that's that's cool. Um, the helmet piece is cool, but was that was that the original purpose or was it around identification? Maybe it could be a continued conversation if that's something PPV is interested in having a continued dialogue about. Yes, thank you, Theo. Um, thank you for that question because I was going to say, um, yeah, I do hope that it's a continued conversation um, because my idea really and what we talked about in the youth subcommittee was just generally um, because there are situations on traffic stops or all the time that there are just lots of benefits to having just very large identification as far as accountability, especially to black and brown communities. It's not just um, an issue at at protests. Um, so I do hope that it's something um, that we continue to consider. Thank you. Okay, I guess I need to look at what Claudia put in. But what I was wondering, Mary Claire, is could you guys make it so that ha so that cops have to have their, you know, their business cards, their identity cards, their, you know, that that's part of their uniform? Uh, that currently is the case. There's, you know, they have business cards and they're supposed to um, provide them upon, you know. Um, okay, so I can complain uh, about a cop that didn't do it. Hmm? I mean, that seems a little silly, but I'm glad. I'm glad you're saying what you're saying. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you, um, everyone. I have a question for uh, uh, for Jared, uh, if that's okay, Ann. Oh, okay. Uh, Jared, I was just wondering if peace, or if you have a date when peace members can expect to be able to have eyes on your report, or if that's still uh, a date by which to have what? Uh, eyes on on the report that you were all submitting. The uh, yeah, so the expectation um, is January twenty fifth. Um, you know, I hesitate to you know make it a hard and fast date only because. We uh, have to have our managers review um, and approve um, our assessments. And presently, if you're watching the news, you'll know that the head of the Civil Rights Division has recently resigned. Um, and you know, new leadership will have to be uh, nominated and confirmed by the Senate. Uh, we do have a nominee for the Civil Rights Division and for Attorney General and Assistant Attorney General all the way down. So. Um, that may play a part in it, but uh, we'll see. Um, January 25th. Thanks, sir. Well, thank you all. Um, is there anything else? I know that we're at time for our meeting. Is there anything else anyone would like to share? If not, um, oh, is there anything? No? All right, well, we'll see you all um, next month um, or at our next PSAP meeting. Thank you. Thanks, Anne. Thanks, everyone.